focus on three different styles of pouches today, the bag, the foldover, and the tactical. For starters, we all know what a drawstring bag is, the, uh, the little sack the bad guy tosses the mercenary in every movie ever made. It's the coin purse, the magic powder bag, the thing all the cool kids put their dice in. These are great for fantasy miniatures, naturally, but also can be right at home on 40k figs that have that retro vibe. Next is the foldover. This sort of satchel is used for saddlebags and general accessorizing, and for magazine retention. Now while this sort of pouch is certainly used in military kit, they look a little different than what you would see on a GW product. Most of what everyone in the 41st millennium is using is from World War I, instead of a more practical version. And I have two theories to why this may be. First, this sort of pouch communicates itself easily to the layman. Remember that our goal at this small scale is to communicate a big idea with a small thing and an old school looking pouch like this is easily recognized without much effort. Secondly, this might be a holdover from comics in the 90s where everyone has slabs of the same retro gear pouch strewn across their costumes. Because pouches equal serious business. But for those looking to implement newer gear solutions, we'll also be sculpting up some tactical options, like this example from STAC. These feature an open top design with a Kydex plastic insert that clicks the magazine into place. These purpose-made pouches are becoming the norm in the tactical industry, and you may as well stay home instead of showing up to the airsoft match without them. To get warmed up, let's do a drawstring pouch. This is going to be one of the easiest of the pouches, and one that you could do fairly quickly. Now I'm going to be using this base, like I've used in previous videos, simply because I want to sculpt it at a larger scale so you guys can see a bit more. A little bit easier for you guys to see. But the principles that we're going to follow um, to make this thing are applicable to any scale, any size. So while I'll be making a big old bag here, um, you could you could make a small little coin purse using the same techniques. So um, standard, clean your base, clean your hands, make sure everything is clean of oils and production mold release. Get your green stuff nice and fresh. And what you're going to do is just get a piece of this green stuff and roll it into a teardrop, okay? So I like to roll it out on your parchment paper into a nice ball. Okay, let it sit for just a second, kind of let gravity condense this piece so there's not as many bubbles and things. I would either lick your fingertips. Um, don't, don't use oil because you're going to need this to stick really well used a little bit of water instead, if you have some water, okay? So either lick or water your fingertip, place it like this, and you're gonna start rolling it out into a shape. Now this could be a coin purse, it could also be a sack, a bag, uh, what have you. We're gonna roll it out like that, okay? Get that nice and close for you guys. And then stick it on your miniature. There you go. Now, something to remember about bags, satchels, things like this, coin purses, is that most of the time they are uh, lashed to a belt or a saddlebag or something like that by a drawstring that's up here, which means that all of this weight is usually flopping around, right? Now, if this is going to be on a saddlebag and your horse is galloping, Remember to keep the motion of that miniature in your pouch, okay? So for example, uh, here is a miniature with some bottles. These are, this is a GW produced bit, right? These bottles lashed, and I added some pouches that look like they are, um, they are hung through the, the little strap there. See how the bag is pointing off this way? That's in reaction to the horse galloping this way, right? So just remember that your anchor point for your bag or satchel is going to be up here at the thinnest point where it is lashed. Now, once this has had a chance to adhere to your base, and you're going to want uh, that to, um, to adhere really well because most of the time we're going to pop this heavy part out so that it looks like it's bouncing around or floating right in the, in the wind. And our anchor point is going to be here at this thin point, which means we need as much clean, fresh contact as possible. Now, what we're going to do is just kind of smooth it. We can work it. 
Um, you could texturize it if you wanted to as well. If you want to make it kind of look burlap like it's a really big bag and you want to burlap it, um, you could uh, get a piece of denim and kind of uh, rub it over this. Um, you may have some hairs to deal with later, but you could texture it if you wanted to. Um, square this top half off. Okay, you're just going to kind of square it, press it down, make sure that it's nice and clean. Now at this point, get a wedge tip brush. And it could either be your wedge tip like this. Um, if you don't have one of those, you can use your you can use your flat chisel tip, your flat flat one like this. Uh, that works as well. You can also use your knife tip. However, this is pretty um this is kind of overkill, and it's going to leave more of, of, an, of a distinct impression on this soft uh, cloth than we want, okay? Um, so, for example, let me show you what I mean. We have that sort of impression right there, okay? Which is all right. We are doing the wrinkles where the cloth is gathered up into the opening. See how the it's very distinct? That's okay if you're practiced with that technique. And what I'm doing is pressing the tip in and kind of bobbing the rest of the blade down to make that subtle crease. It would be better to do it, especially if you're not, if you're just starting out or you're not quite familiar with the technique, to use a softer brush. This one is the extra soft brush. Stick the tip in and then bob the rest of the blade down into the uh, material. The same as if we were making cloth like uh, tabards or something. Okay. Um, ideally, the easiest way to do this is get a, this is a soft, so it's more of a medium um, brush, get the edge into that crease, and then draw that detail out. Okay, That's a little bit softer. See how it kind of pulls it down, and now it looks like whatever is in this bag is heavy and it's stretching the material. Right, so you just get this. I lick it or get a little water. You know, you could put a little bit of oil, but we are going to be adding on top of this, so I wouldn't use oil or um, grease at this time. Just use a little bit of spit. So just get that corner in there and then pull it along, and it'll look, start looking like whatever is in the bag is really stretching it out. Okay. And you can leave it like that if you want, if you're happy with that. Um, I would also wait until this has had a chance to cure, until you mess with it anymore. Okay, I would have a little bit of patience and wait. Because if you mess with it right now, like if I started really defining these lines, it's going to over-respond and it's going to flatten out and not look um, as full. The bag won't look as full. All right, now this has cured for about 45 minutes. Uh, we are going to do the next step. Get a little bit of oil, a little bit, or you could use water on a knife. We're gonna come up here and we're going to just press in a couple of little lines just like that. And that's gonna be our drawstring. Next, you're going to take a conical tip. You're going to press the tip into the furthest area of the crease. So right in here. So that it takes a lot of the detail and then the rest of the detail is spread out. You, you use the, uh, the wedge tip or the flat tip when this is fresh to draw the motion out and draw those creases, that's fine. But if you want to define them and make them finalized, use your conical tip, okay? And any stray stray marks that go too far out, you can smooth with, a, uh, with your soft wedge tip. All right, and this is freshly rolled. And let's roll it out and get a little piece like that. Roll it into a ball, let it sit for a second. Get the bubbles and the lines out. So 
let that sit for a second. In the meantime, we're going to roll a long, thin piece out. And you're also going to roll out the drawstrings. And you're going to lay them over it. And I like to press it like that and then turn the miniature over to let the to let gravity help so that the strings you won't be able to see this on the camera quite yet so that the strings float like that okay a little bit of light under there so they don't stick until I find the spot that I want them okay so you're going to center them over your drawstring spot that you do pressed in and then make sure that they follow the motion of the bag so the bag is going this way and you can press them together or kind of keep them flying doesn't matter but recognize that a drawstring bag if it is closed the strings are going to be longer if the bag is open those strings will be shorter because the string is taken up in the loop which we will add right now this little ball that's been sitting there on the paper oops go ahead and throw it on the floor She gone. I have no idea where that went. Luckily, we had a spare piece, spare bit that we'll use. Okay. <clears throat> Take that little piece, roll it into a little bit of a teardrop shape, and pick it up. What you're going to do is put the thin end, pointy end, onto the tip of the bag there. And then, and this is easiest if you let all of this cure so that you're not messing up anything underneath. Let the, dry, the, the uh, string dry and all of that. But if you are experienced and sculpt little toy miniatures for a living you can sometimes just go for it like that so you stick the point of the bag or excuse me the point of that teardrop on the point of your bag then let it droop down and kind of grab the end with your brush and just pull it down now you're also going to want to work in some some details okay so Work in a, a couple of folds, okay? Droop this down, remember that. The tether point here is uh, here. This is where it's gonna be lashed to a belt, right? So that's where the material is gonna be gathered and pinched together. Just go ahead and do that with your top. And now you have the top opening to the bag. So there you go. There is a little coin purse, satchel, bag, what have you. If you found that things kind of got squished, take the edge of your knife, a little bit of oil. You can tuck them back in and kind of work, work that in so that it looks like there is some cord wrapped around there. Okay. And that's, uh, that's the basic coin purse little pouch and you can also do um, other things like uh, adding rips and tears in the bag and and uh, things like that and you know add some thread like it's been sewn up which we'll show you in some of these other pouches let's move on to some other options all right let's start a uh, let's do a satchel you know maybe this is a messenger bag or a, uh, a saddle bag or something get your green stuff blob plop it on there don't need to roll it out you don't need to do anything else. Just plop it on there and let it start adhering. Okay. Now shape this into. Let's do this one into a um, a square or mostly a square. Okay. 
let's do a almost square where the top is going to be is going to be a little bit narrower than the bottom. And this is just going to be kind of a leather saddle bag. Now, what we're going to do is look at it from the side. We're going to try and get this to be thinner at the top and look like it opens up at the bottom. Get rid of your fingerprints and things like that. Just kind of work it like like that. So the shape, the shape of this is going to be subtle, but it is thinner up here than it is down here. So when we add the flap the lid to it, that will kind of take up some of that space. And it also looks like whatever is in the bag has settled in the bottom and looks heavier. Okay. It adds a little bit of weight to the bag, that illusion of weight. And then you're going to wait until this is about medium cured. So I like to wait about half an hour. That really depends on your elevation, your humidity, wherever you are, how hot it is in the room. Actually heat will cure green stuff faster. So wait till this is about a medium cured. And then we will come back to this one. All right, this has also had about 45 to an hour to cure. I have added two more pouches so that we can do a couple more uh, styles at the same time to show you guys. I've also taken a uh, firm, wide chisel tip to really smooth these out. You don't have to, but it, it does help to also define the edges of your pouches, clean them up, make them more uh, shapely, you know, pleasing to the eye. This one in the center I've decided to make like the pouches you'll see on a lot of GW Marines. Okay, so if you like that style, um, this is how you add more pouches. And why don't you just use the accessories that GW includes on the sprue? Well, because they're a little out of scale. They don't look quite natural. They look very stiff. Um, and they're very bulky. They stick out quite a bit. Also, it takes a lot of filing and smoothing to make sure the edges where you remove them from the sprue uh, don't look obvious. Uh, so, instead, add your own pouches. Okay? Um, we are not going to do a whole lot at this stage because we are going to want these to cure uh, completely before we do um, the tops, the lids. We, what we are going to do, though, is on one of these, we're going to grab our ball pokey. Now, let's go for a bigger one. This is a bigger bigger pouch. We're going to make this look kind of like a boiled, boiled leather. Okay, If a pouch is really soft, uh, like suede, right, um, then it is going to relax and it's going to hug and droop around its contents a lot more. A boiled leather pouch or purse or bag is going to be very rigid. The lid is going to be very stiff and you can open it more easily and remove the, the, uh, uh, the contents. Okay. So leather briefcase, saddlebags, a lot of, a lot of leather, um, is used boiled because it's more stiff. Let's, let's do a boiled leather one. And we're going to put a dimple on either side of the top like that. So, and you'll see why in a little bit. So it looks like there is uh, an actual pouch or a pocket here instead of it just being a solid mass. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of oil and just square off the top here. And just remove it like that. Okay. Now, if this were completely cured, like I suggest that you wait, you could have cut that and then removed it without leaving any sort of trace there. So you can either do that in the beginning of the next step or do it now with a little bit of oil. But we want that to be fairly squared off. And you can already kind of see where our 
flap, our lid, our cover, our top, whatever you want to call it, to this pouch is starting to form, right? This is going to be the main body of the pouch. This is going to be the top. And you'll see that, uh, you'll see that really show up in the, uh, the next step. Now, finally, I'm just going to redefine, kind of clean up my pouch, make the top flatter, Just use a flat brush, and kind of square these edges off. You don't have to if you want your pouch to look more rounded and full or, or whatever. It also would depend on your contents, right? But if you want to, you can take this flat brush and get under here and start to define that, kind of pop it up. And what it will start doing is it's going to add a little bit, you can see from the shadow, a little bit of a lip where it will show you where to put the lid. Okay, it's starting to take shape. So just run your brush under there. If you're doing these pouches at a very small scale, a lot of these steps you could actually omit because you won't see them anyway, and some of them would be impractical to do. Um, but if you can do it, if you can handle the detail, it does make them look quite nice. I would also get a little bit of oil on your knife and start defining the underside of your pouch. <clears throat> any stray little areas that have little stuff sticking out, start to clean that up. And you can also get a chisel tip or a flat tip. And I recommend the extra soft ones so they can do this. And you can just do this and then slide it under there and kind of tuck all that in. Gives your pouch more definition. Okay, so that's where we are. I'm just going to do that to these, and we're going to let them cure. And we're going to let these ones cure all the way to full cure, okay? This one, again, is going to be the squared off World War I style um, pouch that you see on a lot of Marines. And then after we finish these, we will do tactical pouches, more modern, modern style pouches. So you want to make sure that these are actually squared up properly. All the edges are about the same uh, length. These ones are more tear shaped, right? Shorter up here, longer up here, kind of more of a U, kind of a purse shape, right? Okay, let's let these cure. All right, I've rolled out some really fresh green stuff that just finished doing this one. We are going to use this material to make the lids for our pouches. Most of this we're going to let cure for a while, but a good portion of it, a little sliver like that, we're going to roll out, and I'm going to show you how to do a simple method for creating just a round, round lid. Or I guess you'd use it for a square one as well, but... Alright, so roll out a little snake like that. And it's a good idea to get it even. Just grab it. Stick it on there wherever you want the... Uh, however far down you want the pouch. If you want it down all the way to uh, the bottom here, you could do that as well. But Okay, so affix it in the middle, but don't smash the underside of it. Keep this bottom lip. Just bring this other end up, fasten it to the side, bring this end up, fasten it to the side. And we are going to blend in the top lip of this, but not the bottom, okay? So I am going to get an oiled knife, we're going to snip off that top and snip off that top. Okay, easy as that. Now get your rounded cup. Okay. And you're going to 
get the edge of it and then pull towards this way. Okay. And you can flip it over if you need to, but the main idea is to just affix that and let it let it start to really grab that first layer. It's also a good idea to make sure that you don't have any oil under here, okay, on this first layer because then this will not stick. Another point is that you need to have this really fresh uh, because when you blend a, uh, a a fresh layer onto a hardened layer, you're going to have a blend line where you're going to see that that uh, those two layers unless you use really fresh green stuff. Look at the two different colors on this piece. You can see the lighter green has been blended onto the darker green. Those were done in two different layers even though there is no line or no perceivable line after you paint it and prime it. Um, and so to be able to achieve that, really fresh stuff is necessary. Even, even going 60% yellow, 40% blue on your ratio can help, okay? So just grab that inside with the, the cup. This is a firm tip. And what we're going to do is just start blending that on. Now, you can see the edge right there. Get a, you can get a, uh, you can get a chisel tip if you want. Stick the corner in and just start creating that loop of material and really encourage this bottom edge to stick out proud. You don't want it to be lost and get flat, okay? Then go back and start working the top again, okay? And as you're doing it, watch that bottom lip so that it doesn't get lost. Let's zoom in a little bit for you guys. All right, you see that? So we'll just keep working it, and that will give us, that will give this a chance to cure because we're going to be doing some different methods with that. And you could use this method for this piece as well, which we're just going to do a flat, basic cover because remember this is the Space Marine magazine pouch or equipment pouch. Um, you could, but we're going to do a different method just to show you the the different ways of doing it. Also, there's another method that uh, has a little bit more definition and for some people will be a little bit easier as well. And that is we're going to create the lid by itself and then separately and then attach it. Um, this method, while it's fast, if you are careful and know how to blend, for a lot of people blending is very difficult and they just choose to skip it, which is fine. If it's a... Uh, if it's a... Uh, getting to be a little bit difficult for you and you want to choose a different method, that's fine. You see how these, these lines, there's a jagged line where you can see the blend. So you got to keep working it, keep working it. And then eventually they start to come together. Let's see if we can, it's a little bit shiny because I have a little oil on, on there. But this used to be the pouch itself, right? Now it's the lid. And another advantage of doing this is that your pouch does not bulk out too much. So if you have a character that you are kind of wanting to keep trim and get done quickly, you don't have to wait for this to cure and make a lid that may add bulk anyway. Instead, just add a little thin line and create the impression that this is a separate layer when in fact it's not. Okay. We'll just keep, just keep working it. Sometimes working in circular motions like this. You just polish that that uh, layer into the one beneath. Okay. There you go. See how this side has started to collapse. So let's get a. I'm gonna use a conical brush. Conical tip. Get the tip in there. Pop that back out. You can even stick that in there, trace it, and see, now you understand why we let this cure completely. Otherwise, I'd be marking all this up, right? So get under there, just like that. Get the tip in. Draw it down. 
just trace that out and it pops that that lip back up gives it some definition gives it the impression that it's a separate layer all right so just keep polishing that until the lines disappear work it back and forth and the more you work the top make sure you evenly work the bottom and there's you a lid when this cures to a workable uh, state then uh, we will move on to the next method All right, let's give this a little, little try, and we're going to be doing a pull test. Anybody out there has done any of the sculpting with the cloth, you know that the pull test is where you do a strip like that. You're going to fold it into a loop like that, and you're going to be pulling on these wings. If you can pull the loop out without stretching the wings too poorly, I'm going to stretch them out too much, then it's ready, and it is just about there. So, these are really easy. All you do for the Space Marine pouches is just get a strip. Actually, let's go a little bit further down. And let's square it off too, a little bit more. Okay, you just get a piece like this, and because we waited so long for it to cure, it is perfect. It doesn't stick to your fingers too badly. It is nice and easy to work with. So put it down to the height that you want, stick it on there. Get your chisel tip, flatten it back along like that. Okay, draw kind of a line so you know where to cut. A little bit of oil so that it doesn't stick to your knife. Get it in there and simply snip it off. And obviously that is really simple and you could do some far more intricate pouches, but this is basically how you do pouches for uh, Space Marine belts. Now, you can also make these a little bit more pointed like they have theirs. Let's do that. But you also want to tuck this back there. Right, just like that. Get back in there. There we go. Pretty easy. A little bit of oil. Could also wait for this to cure even more, so this will be easy, 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 but this shouldn't be too too difficult. Just go from one corner, slice, real sharp knife, helps a ton. Slice like that. Get your corners all tidied up and then draw them down into a line like that. It's really, really easy. So you can knock these out, make make a whole belt of these real, real easy. So 
Let's take, to finish this off, take a ball pokey and just do a little hole right there. Okay, we'll do a little button there. Next time we roll out some green stuff, we'll just roll a little ball, drop it in there, flatten it out, boom, you have a button. Super easy, guys. Super easy. Again, the reason that you do these sort of pouches, um, it, I mean, if you don't have any bits laying around to glue onto your belt to bulk it out and make some po some uh, pouches, then um, yeah, this is one option. But I also like to add two Space Marine belts instead of gluing on pre-existing pieces because you can scale them to the miniature that you're trying to trying to uh, modify and they hug the miniature a lot easier so you don't have something so bulked out if you use a a bit from uh from other from other um if you use pre-existing bits, they tend to stick out really far. Okay, they tend to, tend to stick out a whole lot further. And these ones just are custom fit. And we'll talk more about bits versus um, custom made in a future video. Now let's put one on here. So I just drew this into the green stuff. I'm also gonna save a slice of this before it gets unruly, gets out of control. Yeah, there we go. So you want to pre-cut that. So let's peel that off. And just lay one of these over the top. Actually going to lay it like that so that it pops out a little easier. Okay. You just lay it over the top, guys, and that gives you that look. Now, remember those dimples that we made? Those show you kind of where to lay it, but also it gives that depth. So if you look at this from the side, it's already got a little pocket in there, so it gives it the illusion that this, um, that this is actually empty inside, or rather more of a pocket instead of a... instead of a solid piece. So it's just that easy, guys, for this method. Now, if you are, let's compare the two. If you are not comfortable with blending, and this seems a little bit more advanced than you want to tackle, just cut out a piece, you know, let it cure, cut out a piece, and then just lay it over the top. Kind of like um, if you've been doing cloth, that same method of making tabards, for example, then this is very, very similar. Okay? Now, let's uh, put that strap on there. Uh, stick it on just like that. A little fuzz on there we will remove. There. Okay. And there are so many different ways to dress these things up with straps and buckles and buttons and lacing and stitching and all sorts of manner of things which you can just play around with. But the a basic just strap and buckle, buckle that we'll add here in a minute once this is cured, is a good simple way. Um, you can also uh, add things on top of here, like perhaps stick a scroll through the top and then do the leather on top so that the scroll is tucked in there. You know, you could give a an impression of uh, this being 
filled with script and scrolls and parchment and things like that. When we get to the tactical pouches, we will be doing loops where we will be adding shotgun shells to the outside of a rifle magazine pouch. So that will be the second half of this video. Okay, so to compare them, again, this is a little bit more advanced if you're not used to blending. This is fairly simple to do and gives definition. Look how look how much that that uh, that pops out. Looks like a nice school bag, right? And once this has cured, I'm going to add a buckle to it, and then pouches will be pretty much done. Except, you know, we also also should uh, add a rip. I'll show you how to do rips in the in the material there, make it look like it's been stitched back up. So before we let this all cure, it would be a good idea to go over everything, make sure everything looks good. But then also for this strap, last thing is to find my, ah, there it is. Find your pokey. Let's zoom it in. And just go do like a poke there. Maybe a maybe a poke there, but you don't want it to. Really, you should be doing those pokes before you apply this to the piece. That's okay. We'll pop it back up. Make it look like this belt is dangling. If you press it down like that, it'll look strange like it's dripping along the top of the lid instead of looking like proper leather a proper leather strap we'll just pop back up no, no big deal okay and then we'll probably clip this off and then add a buckle once this is all cured and a button there so again let this all cure pouches are one of those things where you do in you definitely do in stages and you move on and do something else um, while it's curing you know, you go and uh, finish some other part because doing it in layers and in stages really is a lot easier. So there we go. All right, next we'll finish the strap button and I'll show you how to do eh, probably a button there and maybe a tear as well. And then we'll move on to the tactical pouch. So you just get the tip of your knife, flip it over, use the backside and then kind of put little, little pock marks here and there to make it look like aged leather, do three dots next to each other, do a big dot, do a couple little edges here, crack the edges like that. You don't want anything to be too symmetrical, but you can age things a little bit like that. Let's work on that buckle. So here I have a little sausage of green stuff rolled out, a little piece there. This is going to be Long enough that we can wrap it around as a buckle, but not too long. We don't want it too long because longer, thinner pieces are more wobbly and harder to work with. Thicker, shorter pieces are less wobbly, easier to work with. So don't cut off too much or it gets kind of squirrely. First, let's place it in between the buckles like right there. Lay it along the side of the strap. Affix it in a flat manner. Now I will usually actually tip it like this so that gravity helps me and it keeps uh, this piece from sticking where it doesn't belong, but then you guys won't be able to see it. So we are just going to hope for the best and use a flat brush, we are going to affix that corner. So we're going to pop this up, bring it over, square this up, stick my sharp corner in there, affix that, 
Lay this again, just like the other side. It's starting to stick. So get our knife, a little bit of oil, pop that up, bring it over. There, now we have the beginnings of a buckle. Okay, Let's zoom this in. Hope you guys can see a little better. Okay, we're going to get, again, a little bit of oil. Put the blade right up against the edge. Snip that off. Okay, now you just go about refining it. Make it nice and squared up. Now, if you're gonna be working at a smaller scale, this might not be terribly necessary. You could probably just get away with having a strap and maybe making a button or something like that. It just depends on what size. But if this were gonna be like a, uh, a saddlebag on a horse, <coughs> excuse me, you would uh, you'd probably be best to add this, uh, this detail. You know, if it's large like this, and I will be putting this on a horse later. Um, so you can uh, you can see it in post. Anyway, you just square that up, and then let's grab a little piece for the belt pin. Get another little piece about that size. Stick it in the buckle. We're gonna say that the pin faces downward. That looks a little bit better. Pins go from the inside out. There you go. There's our buckle. And you could keep refining it if you wanted to, sharpen up those edges and whatnot. Um, it's not a Big deal to come in here and make things nice and sharp. Once this cures, I'll probably clip a little length off of that pin. But I don't want to do it now because it'll squish it and make it look bad. Let's add a little button. Same way as doing rivets and studs. Little button that we just set in here. Like that. There you go, good enough, it's like a snap. If you were doing this small scale on Space Marine Belt, that would be more than enough detail. You know, if you were doing large scale, um, you'd wanna add more, more detail, like maybe some um, roughing up the leather or doing some strapping or whatever. But at the small scale that people usually work at, 28 Heroic, that's more than enough. Okay, so now let's add maybe a little button fastener on this one. We'll take a thicker piece. You know what, let's make the uh, button a, uh, a cross. So maybe you put this on the uh, belt of a Crusader or Templar or a, uh, an Empire Soldier. Just get a ball, stick it on there, just like that. Flatten it out. What you're gonna do is get a small Pokey. And you're going to use the ball and just barely hit the corners of that. And that'll give you a good idea of where your cross is. Then you're gonna come in here and you're gonna use this guy and just refine those corners. And it can help if you stick the tip in and then pull. That gives a little bit of a sharp, 
sharp look to the corners of the cross. Okay, starting to form up. And if you find that it's shifting one way, just go to the other side and shift it back. And keep working that around. Sometimes it's better to work from this corner than the opposite corner, then switch to this corner than that. Kind of like when you tighten down the lugs on a, on a tire so that everything is even and you don't start shifting one way too much. Just an idea. And then I will come in with the brush with the chisel tip. Kind of push those corners in. And if you flatten things out and you find that it just didn't take, go back in and and do it again. So tip there, pull out, tip there, pull out. There you go. Now it's starting to look like a cross. All right. Now let's add some. We're just gonna take this piece, we're gonna cut it, put both sides on the paper. And stick them together like this. Okay, in a V shape. Press the tips together. Set it on here. And then we're going to tuck them underneath. So, a little bit of oil. And then slip the blade underneath the edge there. Just like that. Then, get in here and refine what you just did. Tuck those back in so they don't look all squished. There, now it looks like you've got a cross for a button, and then you've got some leather, some little leather straps or uh, strings. Maybe this is a drawstring for the inner bag, and then it has a button, just like that. Okay, and then lastly, let's add a little bit of a tear on this pouch. Okay. So let's get a little bit more. And it's best to actually work with real fresh green stuff, maybe even a 60-40 ratio, 60% um, yellow, just because, again, we're gonna be doing blending and that is easier with fresh uh, yellow weighted um, green stuff. But we'll see what we can do. Maybe we can get this to blend. So roll out a sausage, and then we're going to slip this right there, okay? And just uh, what we're going to do, we'll stay with this stop. So you're going to blend in And trim off so you don't have too much. Just depends on how much you want this rip, how long you want this rip to be. Then you want to flatten down the edges, but leave it tented in the middle. Leave more material in the middle, because you'll see why in a second. Okay. Now I'll refine this in a moment, but you can see kind of how there's more material still in the middle of this. Okay. I'm going to get the rigid tip and start blending that in. 
See how it's starting to blend a little bit easier? The line is starting to, to disappear. Okay. Where you put your rips, you may want to consider putting them along where a corner in the material would be, because that's where the most pressure would be. So along this bottom edge where heavy things would start to press on the material, and then as it rubs against things like brush or stone or whatever else, it wears the bag out, you know, and it eventually rips. Okay, that is that's good enough. So now it's blended, blended in that bit. You can still see some seams here and there. Okay, now take your, take your knife with a little bit of water. You don't want to use oil because oil will not allow the next step to stick. Okay, so we've got a little cut there. See? Cut there. Go, a little little tear like that. See that? Now it is a good idea, of course, to let all of this cure before working because look, I just messed up my strings, so I gotta correct them. But we're gonna do this so that you guys can see it a little bit faster. Because this is gonna be a long video. There's your cut. And you're going to take it like that. This is some really delicate work here. You may want to practice this a little bit before doing it on anything serious. There. Put the stitch over the rip. Okay, just like that. And if you want, you can actually trim it. And you can overlap them. This could be a really rough stitch job, right? The excess from that last one, use it for the last stitch. There we go. And now it all looks stitched up. And if you're feeling real froggy and your scale allows it, if you're big enough scale, you can actually get your small pokey there poke the ends and it will make it look like your threads are going into holes. Make sure you lick the end of it. Kind of hard to see. There you go. So there you go. That's enough pouches. That's enough satchels. Let's do uh, tactical pouches next. You can use the back of this uh, rhino door that I did the filigree on because the gray seems to help the camera a little better than the black. So let's do a couple of magazine pouches. We have a couple of magazines cut out right here. These are just plastic card. And you can make them out of green stuff as well. Just uh, have a sheet of green stuff to a certain thickness of your preference and then just cut them out. It's really easy to make. We'll probably do a magazine and um, and other accessories build in the future, but anyways, once you've prepared a couple of these, we're going to use a glue knife and get a little dab. We can more easily control this glue if we use this method. We're just going to put a little glue right there, 
and we're going to stick a magazine right there. Okay. And for this next one, I have already glued two of the magazines together and see how they're a little bit off center. They're not completely flush with each other. This is going to be two magazines in one pouch. That's called a double stack. Okay. So we are going to glue that down. And the third option, we are not going to glue the magazine quite yet. I'm actually going to use what we'll call a ghost magazine because we're going to use it for imprinting only. To do that, let's grab a little bit of blue sticky tack. We're going to put it on the back of another magazine. See? Okay, just like that. So this one is glued, center ones are glued. That one is not glued, it is just sticky tack. Grab your green stuff. Okay, we're going to roll it out. Let's roll it into a ball. Let's sit for a few seconds. Let gravity kind of ease those gaps out. Don't uh, flatten this out too much. It's about where I am. Okay. This is going to be the material that we're going to use for the pouch itself. Okay. Let this cure to about uh, a medium level, so uh, about an hour. Okay. Let that cure for about an hour. And after that has cured, let's do a slice of it like that. A little oil on the knife, pick it up, and if you let it sit for a while, it will be a lot cleaner and easier to use. It won't wilt everywhere and get saggy and whatnot. Uh, let's do like right there. And you just get your brush down like that. Pull down the bottom. And with the, still a little bit of oil on your knife, trim it away. Tuck in the sides, make them kind of squared up. If this is going to be for a modern soldier using a nylon chest rig or plate carrier, you probably want to leave a little bit of material on the sides so it looks like it's sewn down. However, uh, it, you can make it out of some sort of futuristic material as well or what have you. Just depends on how clean you want it to look. But uh, stretch it over. And you can either have, maybe you want to keep the bottom open just for the aesthetic look, you know, and maybe have the bullets showing underneath, right? Maybe. Um, it's a smarter idea to have them closed off to protect the ammunition, keep it clean, but, you know, aesthetics. Let's do the same thing to this one. There we go. A little bit taller. The reason this one is shorter, that's actually uh, realistic in that a lot of uh, sports shooters that shoot for speed, like in uh, races, like three gun races, they want to be able to get an entire hand on that magazine when they pull it out before they insert it in the weapon. And so they want it to be low. It's, it's enough to retain the magazine if you're doing sports shooting. If you're in combat, rolling around, jumping out of vehicles and airplanes, you want a higher pouch with more retention so the magazine doesn't flop around and it's more secure. So let's do a double stack for this one, right? Let's get this tucked in and the bottom tucked in as well. 
and we'll trim it. On both sides. And if you waited longer than I did, this would be much easier to work with. It would just slice and, and remove, but I'm a little bit ahead of myself. As usual, I just want to get it, get working on it. Anyway, it'll work fine. Now, even though the edge of the magazine has this uh, angle to it, you want to make sure that your pouch, unless it's a hard plastic, if it's a hard plastic, it, it can take the shape of the magazine. If it's a pouch like leather, like we just did, like a satchel or a pocket or made out of nylon, it's going to be squared off. Okay. Matter of fact, let's make this look more like a pouch. So we will soften the corners, make it look more like a bag. More oil on the knife. Nice clean cut and sweep it away to the side where it touches its neighbor. <laughs> you guys won't have that problem. You'll wait long enough and you won't have to deal with soft epoxy. Anyways. All right, let's leave that like that for now and I'll clean up the edges um, in a little bit with the knife and scrape them away. This one that is just held on with the blue tack, this is what we're going to do. This is uh, where it might get interesting for you guys. This is kind of a, I enjoy doing these, they're kind of fun. So you're going to get a little bit of oil on a brush and you're going to brush just the bottom half where you're going to put the green stuff. Now, this is very important. Do not put it on the backer, like this door. Don't put it down there, just on the magazine. Okay, because we're, we're going to need the backer to anchor this, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. All right, get a piece like this wide enough that it will still adhere to the backer, but not this. Okay, so see how it's slipping around? The oil's not allowing it to stick. We are going to make a pocket for this. Then, when this is all cured, we're going to remove the magazine to make it look like an empty pouch, as if the soldier has already drawn it. Okay. And we'll see if it works. It does work if you do it right, but we'll see if I did it right. So see how you need to anchor on the outside? You need to have something there to, uh, to stick. And then when this is all cured, we're going to pop this guy out and we'll have a nice realistic open pouch. Much better than just having a square blob on his on the soldier's chest, right? Much more realistic, it'll look great. Okay, so I would let this cure just like this. Um, perhaps as it's curing, clean it up. Um, any of the little areas, square them up with your brush, clean them with your knife, and then we're gonna add the tops. As this is curing, I'm going to add, since this is going to be a cloth cloth pouch, I'm adding some wrinkles. So just like any other cloth, we're going to use the conical tip. We're going to push it in and then rock it out so that it opens up in a teardrop shape. Looks more like the cloth is gathered. Okay. You don't need to make it look like it's made out of cotton or anything, don't go crazy. But uh, just some wrinkles. Some wrinkles kind of make it look 
if it's made of a different material. You can also see that I have cleaned up the sides of the magazines, sculpted them tight, or excuse me, the pouches, sculpted them tight to the magazines. This one I'm a little bit nervous it might not work because I didn't oil the sides of the magazine, so this green stuff probably stuck to it. And I also removed a lot of the green stuff from the backer, so this may or may not work. We'll see. But I think you guys get the idea. Let's finish these pouches up. Now these have hardened, and this one on the left is pretty much done if you wanted to just use it as a Kydex simple speed reload magazine, right? Um, you could also do a flap like we did with the satchels, right? So you could do a pouch cover like that to make it look like a uh, standard sort of uh, cover. Maybe do it thin so that you can see the magazine inside for a bit more detail. But you guys have already seen how that's done, so let's do something else. Let's just leave this as it is, but add some shotgun shells, okay? I have some thin plastic card tubing. I have cut two shells here. And then I also have a stick here, and I'll show you the two different methods of applying these. You're just going to cut them up and stick them on there. Uh, because I don't have, fortunately, more than two hands, we're going to lay this down and we are going to apply with the glue knife. So hopefully you guys can see. So get your glue knife. Again, this is a, a uh, knife that you don't really cut with. You just use it to precision apply glue. And I'm going to get a little bit. We're just going to apply it right here. Now I need to work quick. Then get your tweezers. And just stick it on there. You only have a brief second to actually glue that on. There you go. Let's do another one. Now, if you are not particularly handy with the tweezers, you can also apply it with a different method. Leave a little bit of definition between shotgun shells. That way, if you add a uh, rim, a, a brass uh, rim on the bottom later, uh, you can have a little bit of space between those. They don't look so squished. That definition looks better as well. Okay, if you're not handy with the tweezers, you can also just get a tiny bit of glue on a stick, just a tiny, tiny bit. See, just, just let it stick to your finger. There we go. Okay, and let those dry. Once they are, you can trim them. Once they're dry, just trim them off. There we go. Now let's add a strip of material to make the loops for those shotgun shells. So here I have some green stuff that has cured for about half an hour. And remember that we want to let things cure so that they are easier to work with, whether it's cloth, or little fiddly bits like this. It's just easier if they've had a second to uh, to settle. So, cut a little slice, and we're just going to lay it across. Like that. Okay. Before you lay it down, get a chisel tip, straighten it out,
go. Start on one end. Just lay it across. Okay, it doesn't need to be perfect initially. You can clean it up just like this. Right. Oops. Let's straighten it out down here. Take the chisel tip, tuck it under the last shell. Tuck this end the same way. Okay, get a little bit of oil on your knife. Slip the blade under there, press it down, and just tear that off, just like that. Okay. Now, with that same oil on your knife, we are going to slip in between the shells, just gently. Just one and two. Just like that. Okay. And you can leave it like that. Um, you could, at a larger scale, add detail like a bullet and the uh, casing, like the brass brass rim, um, however you would like. But let's move on to this one. We're going to turn this one into a, um, a shock cable retained pouch. Okay, These are open-topped pouches that use bungee cords to hold the pouch in place. To begin, let's cut this in half. Okay, just like that. And then make a V-shape. Make sure they touch. Okay, like that, and just pat them down. Press them down like that. Lick your finger so it doesn't stick. Kind of gather the sides like this. Okay. Uh, I should have licked my finger more. There. Just like that. Okay. I'll grab this up. You're going to stick that on your pouch, just like that. Now, don't press these down, because the bungee does not act like that. It doesn't snake down onto the magazine like that. You want it to look like this, right? So the only places that you're going to press are here to secure it, and then let this Come around here naturally. Like that. Okay. Now, take the flat of your brush and easily press them down. Don't squish them down all the way. Okay? You want there to be some space between those. Now you can fold this over on top of itself to make it look like the pull tab that they have on the top. Okay, just like that. Now down here, let's add one last little, little detail to that. I'm just going to get a little sliver. I'm going to roll it into a little snake like this. Get your brush. 
and we're going to make the loop that the elastic comes through. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Not bad, huh? That should about finish it up, guys. For this last pouch, check this out. Huh? Huh? Pretty slick. Pretty slick. So now you have an empty pouch on your soldier's belt that looks like he's already drawn a magazine, right? And for the action figure enthusiast in all of us, look how cool that is. You can replace the mag. Okay, so there you go, guys. Uh, some tactical pouches for you. Hope this, uh, this video was helpful. I know it was long, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to the patrons. Thanks to you guys for subbing. If you have questions, send them to my email. Send them to the instant messenger email as preferable or on the discord because uh, Patreon itself is a little sketchy and even Instagram is getting a little sketchy. So your best bet is join the discord where we have a good community of sculptors ready to answer questions and give feedback as well as um, discussions for the videos that we make here. And it's the fastest, most reliable way to get a hold of me, other than email. So, thanks so much, guys. 